What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs. Let's talk about some good old fashioned Texas weirdness. Texas is a great state, and in my opinion, if you're looking to start a new life and you don't mind the heat, it's probably the best state for most people thinking about doing that. They've got a good economy, jobs, decent crime rate on average, and friendly people. What's not to love? Other than their blizzard and subsequent utility failures last month, there really aren't a lot of big problems Texas has. I mean, no out of control homelessness like you get in Los Angeles and San Francisco, not the poverty and crime you get in Detroit things like that. Texas is just a decent state that's doing things the right way in most cases, at least compared to other states. People and businesses are moving to the Lone Star State, and I get the feeling this movement is only going to gain steam in the coming years. Today, we're going to take a look at some of the mind-blowing facts about Texas. All right, let's see what we found. Number 10. Bugs Bunny's catchphrase. Bugs Bunny used to say, what's up, doc? Well, that phrase originated in Dallas. The Looney Tunes animator Tex Avery, who attended North Dallas High School, introduced us to that phrase. He later said he didn't think much of it because it was a common phrase used around the parts where he grew up. It was just normal. He just added it into Bugs Bunny and it became like his catchphrase. That's what he says. If you're going to do a Bugs Bunny impersonation, that's what you say. Number 9. The Deadliest Natural Disaster in United States History In the history of the United States, we've had some serious hurricanes, wildfires, earthquakes, and tornadoes, but nothing compares to the Great Galveston Hurricane of 1900. The Great Galveston Hurricane killed between six and 12,000 people, and it wasn't the wind and the rain that killed them, for the most part. It was the storm surge that was up to 15 feet. Galveston had an elevation at the time of 8.7 feet and the storm brought a surge of over 15 feet. That means the water was around six feet deep across the entire city. Bodies were washed out to sea, and then they would come back in, in some cases, days later after the hurricane. So they had to go out on the beach and collect bodies that had been floating around the Gulf of Mexico for a couple days, which, you know, that was a pleasant experience. The next deadliest hurricane in U.S. history was Hurricane Katrina, which claimed 1,200 lives. This one, minimum 6,000. They didn't have the best records back then, but at minimum it was 6,000 people, but could be up to 12,000. But many say it will be moved down to number two once COVID-19 is over and they finally classify it as a natural disaster. While I was researching this, they've had some court cases over COVID-19, you know, how people could claim it on their insurance. Can insurance companies get out of this because people had natural disaster insurance and stuff like that? A couple judges said, Said, yes, this is absolutely a natural disaster, but we'll see when they finally, I guess, classify it. Number eight, a time capsule worth a bunch of money. Now, besides the fact that where they buried this time capsule is kind of weird that they have a monument like this, that's not the weirdest part. It's called the Helium Centennial Time Columns Monument, and it was built in 1968 to honor the 100th anniversary of the discovery of helium, of all things. <laughs> You built a monument to that? Something that makes balloons fly at kids' parties now and makes you talk really funny? I don't know. One of the time capsules sealed on the monument is set to open in 1,000 years from the date that it was buried, which is in 2968. Inside of that time capsule is a passbook for a bank account that's expected to be worth one quadrillion dollars by the time it's opened in 2968. Yeah, they put $10 in it there, and that's how long it'll take. It'll be worth a quadrillion dollars in a thousand years. Now, obviously, none of us are going to be around for that, so we'll just have to hope that that bank or money is still being used then. Now, don't get excited and start looking for a shovel. It's only worth about $126 right now, so yeah, just let it sit. Number seven, a town called Dish. Dish is a town in Denton County, Texas. The town has a population of about 201 people. That was at the 2010 census. Now this community hasn't been around that long. It was actually established in June of 2000. It was originally named Clark. In November of 2005, the community accepted an offer to rename the city Dish from the company Dish Network. Yeah. Now. Part of the deal is all the residents receive free basic television service for 10 years and free digital video recorder, which, you know, their big thing, you know, like a TiVo, DVR. Yeah, that was all part of it. All they had to do was change the name to Dish. There was no formal opposition to renaming the town of Clark to Dish. 12 citizens attended the city council meeting and they all supported the measure. So it <laughs> was no problem. Everyone's like, all right, we'll do it. So yeah, they... <laughs> 
get to get basic cable, which it was only for 10 years. So that was in 2005. So that's already up. In 2005, energy companies began drilling natural gas wells in Dish. Town residents complained of the foul smell and health issues that were linked to natural gas, methane, and benzene emissions from the wells. The town spent $15,000 on air quality tests, which found elevated levels of several chemicals, including benzene. Following that, the energy companies made changes. Yeah, you think? Only in Texas will you find a town that'll actually change their name so they can get some free basic service from a satellite company. Number six, Texas gave Six Flags its name. Angus G. Wynn decided to open his first theme park in 1961, and he wanted to pay tribute to his home state of Texas. The name Six Flags comes from Texas' entire history and the state being owned by six different countries over its recorded history. Those countries were the Kingdom of Spain, the Kingdom of France, the Republic of Mexico, the Republic of Texas, the Confederate States of America, and the United States of America. Number five, Texas is big. Texas is larger than any country in Western Europe. And before you say it, Russia is not part of Western Europe. It's part of Eastern Europe. As a matter of fact, you could fit Switzerland, Belgium, Austria, Liechtenstein, Denmark, and Luxembourg into Texas and almost have room for the Netherlands. Number four, they're the king of Tornado Alley. More tornadoes have been recorded in Texas than any other state by far. The state of Texas reports that they average 132 tornadoes per year. That's one tornado roughly every three days. The Weather Channel says the average is more and it blows the number two state out of the water. This is from their website. The two most active states for tornadoes are Texas with 155 annually and Kansas with 96 annually. They're both located in the heart of Tornado Alley, a nickname given to the area in the plains between Central Texas and South Dakota that has some of the most tornadic, that's a word, activity in the world. Yeah, if you have a bunch of tornadoes going on, it's called tornadic. Number three. Sammy Hagar loves this place. At 85 miles per hour, Texas has the fastest speed limit in the United States. Texas State Highway 130, better known as Pickle Parkway, has a 41 mile section that has a marked speed limit of 85 miles per hour. It's located in Austin. 85 is their speed limit in a lot of these areas, but when I've driven in Texas, when they get out on the highway, they sort of treat that like a suggestion instead of a law. Number two, nothing interferes with football. One Texas town rescheduled Halloween because it conflicted with the Friday night football game. Yeah, no kidding. In 2014, Halloween was on a Friday night. The town of Decatur voted to reschedule Halloween to October 30th because, like I said, October 31st conflicted with the high school's Friday night football game. If you know anything about Texas high school football, you know some of these towns take this game seriously. I mean, honestly, they have stadiums that actually can hold up to like 50,000 people for a high school football team. Now, Decatur isn't that big, but there are high schools like that in Texas. Decatur wasn't the only high school. When the town of Van, V-A-N, heard about this, they followed suit. They had a twist, though. They made it sound a lot better because they moved it to November 1st, and that was a Saturday that year. So everyone liked that. They got to stay up late. It was great. But yeah, I just think that's really, really strange that they'd actually move a holiday. Now, granted, it's not a federal holiday or religious holiday or anything like that. It's an American pastime or holiday, whatever you want to call it, and they just moved it. Weird. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget all the links below. Give the video a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. And don't forget, we got our other channel on this day. There's a link down below. We got videos coming out on that channel like five days a week. Sometimes we miss one, but most time it's five. All right, on to number one. And number one, I think they're training for a sumo competition. Texans like to eat. I just did a video talking about how they have more great barbecue places than any other state, and their tacos are worth the price of a plane ticket from Oregon. And that's why in Texas, there are more obese adults than there are people in Minnesota. Yeah, that's the weird stat. There's more obese people in Texas than there are people in the entire state of Minnesota. That just seems kind of weird. Per capita, they're not the absolute worst. That would be Mississippi. But Texas has so many people that 
it's just a weird stat that they have that many big people. Now, I'm not ragging on any, you know, obese people or heavyweight people. I mean, I'm not the thinnest dude hovering around the internet myself, but I just think that's outrageous. 65.9% of the adults in Texas are overweight and 34.8% of them are considered obese with a population of about 8 18.2 million, so that means around 12 million of them are overweight and about 5.6 million are considered obese. That's a weird stat. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, be nice to each other.